All right, Dave and Quinn, thanks, guys. Good game in Michigan. So Indiana's not going to win the state of Michigan championship this weekend. And here in the SEC on Super Tuesday, two red hot teams, two in the top 15, fourth ranked Tennessee, number 14, Alabama. Have an at it. And that's going to be an offensive foul against Erwin Dudley down on the block. He tried to establish position down in there and pushed off in doing so. Here's the guys on the floor, the starters, Harrison Higgins in the backcourt, Yarbrough, Victor, and Hathaway up front. London, Meade, Grizzard, the leading scorer in the conference, Dudley and Walker for Alabama. Larry Conley, I'm Brad Nestler. It's nice to have you with us. Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville. There's Victor on a pay. Top shot. I'm going to tell you what, is he hot? There's 34 points on Saturday against Auburn. He comes right back and hits two tough shots. SEC Player of the Week. Playing like it early here. Walker misses. Tough rebound inside and a good job by Grizzard to get over Hathaway and score. Grizzard averages about five rebounds a game. He's a very good offensive rebounder, as is Dudley. Off the fingertips of Victor as they try to pack it into the low post. Mark Godfrey in his third season at Alabama. All the injury problems they had last year, and they knew they had talent. And they thought if they got them all healthy and got back in here, they would be a good team, although they're relatively untested. Their only loss was to Cincinnati in overtime. They did win over the weekend. Got a huge 15-game monkey off their back as far as road losses as they beat LSU over the weekend. Here's Dudley. Finger roll inside. Hathaway tried to get the rebound, but Dudley went and got it a second time. I'm going to tell you, Erwin Dudley is a warrior. When he gets inside at 240 pounds, even though he's going up against Tony, he's down low on both sides. And there's quickness on the wings and really lightning speed at the point. Tony Harris to three. Rebound kept alive, straight back up with it. And job rolling, he missed as well. Tariq London running the club at the point right now for Alabama. They've done this point guard position almost by committee this year, and they've kind of given it to London to take over as the senior. Nice square up and dropping it in from the outside is Walker. And he's got four. And he averages five a game, so he's off to a pretty good start. I guess. They'll try to do a lot of screening down inside and free Victor with a good lob pass inside. Here's Victor. Hathaway trying to keep it alive. The big fella nice deep pass. down low on the baseline. Beautiful pass. The dish to Higgins. Hathaway, Hathaway had a terrific game the other day. Eight points, 11 rebounds against Auburn. That time he showed us a little bit of his passing skills. And a kick ball. Fresh shot clock. Jerry Green on his home floor knows how to win in his fourth season here. And at home two years ago, they were 14 and one. Last year, 15 and one. This year so far, seven and oh. So this is a very tough place or has become a tough place to play for the opposition. Change a little bit of seating in here to give more students access to the, to the floor. I a like closer. That. A little more noise down yeah. there on our, to our left. Hathaway clears it ahead. Tony Harris. Tony got a bad bounce on the floor there. Hit a dead spot. And the ball took off, and it's a turnover. Sometimes he just outruns the ball. <laughs> Meade from way out. Kept alive by nice London. Pass. Nice pass. is inside, and a missed jam, and out of the outlet to Harris on the run. Tony gets mugged from behind by London. They're going to call an intentional foul. I think that's a good call. Yeah, it is, because Harris had the extra step out in front. Mark Godfrey's going to disagree with John Cloverty, but he said he reached out and grabbed him as he was getting ready to go up for the layup. You make the call. Does he? Pretty close. Yeah, I guess so. It's only Harris to go to the free throw line. Mark's still not happy with the call. Still letting John Cloverty know about it as Harris got the first. That's a tough situation right there because you know that London was trying to get there to try to slap the ball away. And he reached out and grabbed his body and didn't get any of the ball. Just not a very good actor, that's all. <laughs> We're tied at eight with 15.53 to go in the half. Yes, Knoxville, 15.53 to go in the first half. We welcome you back to Thompson Bowling Arena. Brad Nessler along with my bespeckled partner this year, ah, Larry Conley. I indeed. like those. Yeah, well, the better to see the game with. Well, we're seeing a good one so far, 8-8. Eight, eight. These are the two teams everybody thought would do well in the SEC, and they're both off to good start. Yeah, Alabama was picked to finish second in the Western Division of the Southeastern Conference. Tennessee picked to win the overall championship. But both of these clubs with only one loss apiece so far in the season, both of them playing up to the expectations. We've seen the starters so far, but they got some sensational guys off the bench this Super subs. You see Gerald Wallace, one of the true great freshmen in the country, and what he's done. And Ron Slay, who's 
almost as you said earlier, the emotional leader of this Tennessee team, even though he doesn't start. I, I think the one word I would attach to Ron Slay, flamboyant. Yes, he is. <laughs> he was out here with one of those uh, hard hats that you just saw in some of the fans in the crowd. He had one of those on while he was shooting warm-ups before the game. Here's Victor in low. A little bit short that time, as Wallace may have gotten a piece of it. London will run it up. Brad, neither of these clubs are very shy about getting the ball up the floor in a hurry. Their transition game is outstanding. They've got a lot of athletes out here. Why do I know that? Because there are 19 NBA scouts here tonight <laughs> to watch these two teams play. These guys are lined up down there. The Wallace will inbound. Down low to Grizzard. Nice turn. Wallace flying in for the rebound. Oh. Brad, one of the things about Wallace that I have noticed in his playing this year, and also his stats, he's very good in and around the, around the basket. He really struggles from about eight feet out with his shot, but he is very athletic and strong to that hoop. He's a guy that will dunk it on you just about every chance he gets. The last one with a lay in assaults. Tony Harris is a guy that will take it outside for you. And he drops in his 33rd three-pointer of the year to put Tennessee back in front by one. In the three-plus years you, you and I have been doing SEC basketball, we've seen him do that a lot. I guess. I love shooters, and he's a good one. square by Dudley. Telling you these two clubs can really shoot the basketball. Alabama came in shooting 46 percent. Tennessee at a very respectable 47 percent. You can see why in the early going here both teams getting good looks at the basket good square up looks. Two of the highest scoring teams not only in the conference but in the top 15 of the country. Harris twice in a row. Eight for Tony. He can drill it. gets in one of those grooves you got to get out on it. and now a little too over anxious on defense if I'm scoring in win a game I think that's positive for that he had five rebounds and five assists and he is as you see Grizzard with a beautiful drive on the left hand Tony Harris has become a point guard he used to just be a gunner when he was a freshman now he's known as a more mature player and runs the show out there but he can still shoot lights out when he has to now you can see the change in defense right now. They've moved the guy out top on him, and that's what they should do, and that's Anton Pedaway. Very smooth. silky smooth. Pedaway in there now. He's played a lot of point. Here's Wallace with a finger roll on the baseline. No foul call. They got around Hathaway somehow. Pedaway doing a nice job of shutting down Harris. There he goes up. Harris got open again. Clear look. In and out. And the rebound is Guzard's. Nice feet inside Dudley. Nobody went to stop him. Lead changes, four ties in the early going. So it's Slay and Hayslip, Higgins, Yarbrough, and Tony Harris from Tennessee. Harris, nice little skip pass inside to Slay. Got around the first wave of traffic. Got his own miss and score. It's the offense, you bet. <laughs> As soon as he hits the court, he's looking at the rim. Isaiah Victor is sitting on the side watching. He'll be back in in a few minutes. Wallace picks up the foul. Here's nice look. Good bounce pass by Tony Harris that time. On the move. Good ball fake right there. And once again, watch Slay go back up a second time. Good effort. Ron Slay really very strong in there. 6'8", 225 out of Nashville. Wallace, the guy that got him from behind. And Ron hands down the free throw. So a three-point play. It is opening with about 30 seconds on the floor. Very tough to double up on Terrence Mead, the guard for Alabama. He's one of the better ball handlers I think this league has. Juan Petway now running things at the point for the tie. Lazard downtown missed a three. Rebound to Wallace. with a miss or the rebound off the miss I should say Tony Harris saved it on the sideline How about the save by Harris huh yeah, he almost went into the uh, possession arrow there save that one again he got that one-handed pass down low to Yarbrough and they're going to say off Yarbrough's knee That's five turnovers on Tennessee pretty good defensive work that time by Alabama Way, a freshman out of Alberta, Alabama, born in Tuscaloosa. They got a lot of homegrown talent. Oh, nice move. Didn't drop, though. Grizzard almost got it back. And it is going to be Alabama's ball. How out about now. that move by Grizzard off of the baseline? 
Keep an eye on Mead out front. Lazar trying to get Yarbrough to jump for it. Tony Harris, nice job defensively. They're going to call a jump ball, and the possession error will go to Tennessee. Coming up tonight at midnight Eastern on ESPN College. Talk about this SEC showdown. A look back at Indiana, Michigan, Arizona's woes, and a lot more. For more information, on the ESPN.com. College Hoops tonight, following Sports Center. Brad Nessler, Larry Conley here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Big crowd at Thompson Bowling Arena. Never fills the joint up, though. There's just too many seats in this place. <laughs> Yarbrough with a behind the back pass and threw it away. Trying to get it to Hazlett. 11.45 remaining in the first half. Good game going. Tennessee by one. 11.45 remaining in the first half, an up and down the floor ball game. Both teams not quite where they normally are as far as shooting from the field. Tony Harris is the only two point, uh, two three pointers in the ball game. There's Tony, the senior out of Memphis. Decided to come back this year. I think he flirted a little bit with trying to go to the NBA, and a lot of people discouraged him from doing that last year. And Really helps Jerry Green's club because you like to have a spearing, experienced guy running the point. 1,400 and 48 career points for Tony. There's the field goal story so far. That's 41 percent for Alabama, 46 for Tennessee. Nice look down low. Beautiful pass and an easy one underneath. Give Bazard credit. He got it in there after Petway was struggling to get it up against Harris. Doc Martin. Off the bench with his first basket of the ball game. Petway a little bit better defender on Harris than uh, Doc Martin out there. Long ball, he slipped. Most he called backboard, but it rimmed out on him. Bank wasn't open now. Yeah. Wallace. That way they move it around the perimeter. Wallace on penetration. Not a great shot off balance. Slay with a rebound. Slay's third rebound. Is Hale goes up and snares it. Tony Harris, great dish. I told you Hazel was athletic. I'll tell you what, he flew right over Rocky Top on that one. <laughs> that was a beautiful pass. Now we got a little bit of a Grindstaff and Martin going at it out front away from the ball. I think that's where the foul's going to be. It's going to be Grindstaff. Watch Tony Harris with a nice lob pass. That was a perfect pass. Put it right in front of the rim and just turn it over to the guy who's 6'10 who can fly. Grindstaff was called with the foul down on the defensive end. He and Doc Martin were all tangled up. Grindstaff tried to uh, plead his case. Tony takes a breather. That's a good start. Wallace spin move, changed hands in midair, and there's the follow-up by Dudley. Dudley ever present, very good around that basket. He's one of the better offensive rebounders in the Southeastern Conference. Almost 50% of his rebounds come on the offensive end. Alabama gone about three minutes without a field goal. They change it there and change the scoreboard. Up by one, and Hazlett goes up and jams it. They're going to call offensive interference. I think they're counting the goal. I, I think he threw it through and just held onto the rim for fear he was going to fall on somebody. Did he ever get up? Oh, my, look at this. I think they waved this thing off. Although that didn't look bad, but they didn't put it up on the scoreboard. I think that should have been a good goal. Three outside, rebound comes down, great outlet pass. Tennessee on the run, the lead for Slay. Well, Tennessee doing a nice job of moving the ball around, Brad. They're fighting the open man on the break. That was a wonderful job by Walker and then Woods just touch passes to get it down to the big fella. Dudley in close. And slay the rebound. Nine and a half to play in the half. Tennessee by two. Nice Got his man in the air and found way outside. Let's go back and take a look at that Tennessee basket. Good outlet pass to the side. Watch this lob pass by Terrence Woods. Up and in. Well, that's an easy one right there for Ron Slay. The guards of Tennessee, particularly the guys off of the bench, and I'm talking about Harris Walker and Terrence Woods, contribute a great deal to this Tennessee offense. That talk gives those guys a chance to get a breather. You know what, Brad? The thing you talked about at the top of the show about their depth, I think that's one of the reasons why they're number four ranked in the country. It's because of their depth. I mean, they've got fresh legs out there all the time. Well, they've got 
10 guys that average 11 minutes or more, and nobody plays over 30. And the bench contributes 33 points a game. That's going to help you anytime. The only time that really didn't come to pass was the only time they lost. I saw that game, did that game. Virginia dominated them. They just weren't in that game, but they have played beautifully in all the other 15, and they're off to one of the best all-time starts here at Tennessee. I think there was a lot of questions about that game, uh, that Virginia game, when they got pounded by Virginia, how they would do, and they immediately went to Syracuse and beat a pretty good Syracuse team. Right. Eight to go in the first half, man. It's Tennessee out in front by one. Now from Orange Bowl to the Orange in Knoxville. By the way, I want to take a second. Nice job on the Orange Bowl. Thanks, Terrific. Carter. Very, very good. Enjoyed the game. Great defense by Oklahoma. There's the guy. You always leave tickets for guys that have hairdos like that. I don't know where you get those. That gives a totally new meaning to the rock <laughs> at Rocky Top. <laughs> We're under nine minutes. Brad Nessler, Larry Conley, and our ESPN crew from Thompson Bowling Arena. SEC showdown between two top 15s, 14th ranked Alabama, number four, Tennessee. Tennessee hasn't been ranked this high since 1968. Right staff, a lot of real estate. Slay backs in. Well, big rebound by Wallace. Is he doing a number so far off of that bench? He can really get in the air. He's Dudley with a right hand hook. This is every way. Dudley with 10. But he is so good. Right, it's hard to say which one of these Alabama guys is the best. And there's Slay going downtown for three. <laughs> with a little reaction afterwards. Slay. It's Tennessee right back in front. Looks at the crowd and said, how was that? His seventh three-pointer of the year, so he's not shy at 6'8 of putting it up. There's a steal by Woods. Got it back. Almost gave it back. Now Slay. Whoa, look out. Try to leave it. And collision underneath. What's the other thing about Ron Slay? He is so active. He makes everybody else on the floor, not only the guys he's playing with, but the guys he's playing against more active. You've just got to get ready to come out and play him. And Slay still pumped up. Try to get the crowd into it. 747. His three pointers given his balls the lead. See by two. And again, it's at 12 lead changes. Alabama ranked 14th in the country and a uh, pretty cohesive unit. Doc Martin is one of their seniors. And he talked with ESPN's Andy Katz about how these guys hang together on and off the court. 7.45 left to the half. And Tennessee leading on their home floor. Bama stays in that man-to-man -man defense. Good fake. And enough to draw a foul from Desire. Big step very quick with the basketball. He's an interesting story. Transferred from Virginia Tech over here. Had After the opening game last year, so as Larry said, just a handful of games really in two years. He's a good outside shooter, too, if you get too much room. He's out of there right now. Tony Harris comes back in. Job rolling a fade. And, and a whistle and a push on the back side. And Victor going for the rebound, says Ted Hiller. And Isaiah picks up his first foul. The Bluebirds come out in Knoxville, feeling like that Isaiah Victor never commits a foul. <laughs> This is close to the starting lineup on the floor for Tennessee right now. And for Alabama, you got Martin and Wallace in there that didn't start the ball game. Dudley. Ripped one out that time. Wallace really didn't have to jump for that rebound, but he jumps for that score. Well, he is so strong on the inside. Give he and Dudley a lot of credit because both of their bodies take up so much room in there, and they'll go back up with a lot of strength his fourth rebound as well and he made it pay for two and ties it at 24. Slay double team didn't mind still got it. <laughs> what was your word? Demonstrative? No. What did you use? Flamboyant. Flamboyant. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, he's a gas even in practice to watch. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to give him another label, too. How about screwball? <laughs> watch Slay right here maneuver around the lane. Gets to the right side. Good fake, good turn. Gets it up in the air, draws the foul from Walker, and then does a little act on the floor on the baseline. Here's his opportunity for his second three-point play of the ball game, though. This is a guy that doesn't start. Ten points already. Missed that one, though, but Victor keeps it alive. Victor goes right back up, and he'll have a chance at the free throw line. Now both players have given a good ball fix. That time, Walker took it up in the air and thought he had it blocked. Nice job by Victor to get the rebound and turn around and get the foul. So Slay, who's had the last seven points for Tennessee, that might change with Victor at the free throw line. Mark Godfrey not happy with the fact that his club allowed this rebound to come back over to Victor. Watch the ball fake. Nice job. You know, I'm convinced, Brad, that when you ball fake, the closer you get to the basket, the more effective ball fakes are. As you get further away from the basket, guys don't take them. When you get that yeah. close, the pressure really created in the defense is really tough to stop. Which was unbelievable amount. And finally, Victor gets one to drop. In fact, the two clubs had a little bit of an altercation in, in one of all places, the hospitality room. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. That was at the Rainbow Classic uh -huh. in Honolulu. We're supposed to be enjoying the weather and the <laughs> tropical ambience of Hawaii instead of getting to the fight in the dream room. Here's Wallace. A little short. And Ray Harris pulls down the rebound. Yabro. He gets to that baseline in a hurry, missed the shot. And he has now given Tennessee its biggest lead of five with those free throws. Nobody home for Dudley. You know, if you're going to press, you got to get that first wave. If you don't get that interception, you're in trouble. Alabama had numbers and took advantage of it. Irwin's got a dozen. And we're under six minutes in the half. Dudley is no dud. No, he isn't. He's live ammo so far tonight. Yabro lost it in the paint. And the foul's going to be on Wallace. A lot of reaching right now by Alabama. Yeah, they've had a long road trip. It's almost like an NBA team. Yeah. They went over to the Rainbow Classic in Honolulu, won that one over there. In fact, beat a pretty good Iowa team. Mm -hmm. and turn around, beat Hawaii in the championship game. In fact, their resume is pretty impressive, with the exception of that loss to Virginia that we talked about. They have beaten some good teams. Syracuse are in the Big Ten, Iowa, and Wisconsin. The lead is five again for Tennessee. Here comes the Volunteers on defense. It's a two-three matchup. They worked on this in practice yesterday. Even through traffic was Wallace. He's running that side, missed the three. Kept alive. And finally tipped to Victor. Only Harris. Higgins in the backcourt now. Good recovery by Alabama. Slay wants it in there down low. And an offensive foul. Probably. Once again, that zone defense. Watch Tennessee work his sideline to sideline. Very quick. See the other scores coming in from around the country. Some finals, some in progress. Jim will have all those updated for you coming up in about five minutes. Long ball. That time it's good by me. Terrence Mead had an outstanding game last year when he got 19 points against his volunteer club. In fact, it kind of knocked them out of winning the championship in the SEC. It was a four-way tie, and Alabama upset them, and Tennessee was ranked seventh last year. Tony Harris going to try three of his own, didn't get the roll. That was an odd game, and that everybody expected, everybody in the world expected Tennessee to win that. Alabama was banged up, short-handed, and they lost by five. And you know that that fact isn't lost on Tennessee coming into this game either, but it doesn't look like Alabama's going to make it easy for them no matter where they play. We're tied again. Tariq London with a nice move down the lane with an easy basket. There's that one-handed pass again of Harris. This time Slay gets blocked. Lazard got it. Even knocked him down. Alabama can regain the lead if they score. Well, good job that time by Gardner Dudley. Gardner on his hands on it. There's one Alabama player in the whole mix, and he's going to be the guilty party as Meade picks up his second foul. It's a super sub for Tennessee that has him in the lead right now. Well, Ron Slay's come off the bench and done exactly what he's supposed to do. Let's give him instant offense. Watch Slay make the move around the lane inside. Good ball fake. Watch this second effort. That's one basket. He gets sticking it back. But he can also go long range, nailing this three. 
Slade also takes it, makes nice moves once he gets to the inside and can use the glass as well as anybody. Well, he's the leading scorer for Tennessee with 10. Wallace has four. Wallace has slowed down a little bit. He had such unbelievable games early. Now, some of that has to do with the competition, as Alabama didn't have the toughest schedule in the world before the last couple of weeks. But his numbers have come down dramatically, and sometimes we see freshmen hit that wall a little bit in midseason and then have to get a second wind as they head into the conference schedule. I think Dudley knocked that one out. He did. Slay on the sideline. And Wallace is as well for Alabama. So Hathaway's back in there for Tennessee. And they've got their starting five on the floor. Charles lost that dish from Higgins. Victor tried to go up and jam it. And Yarbrough lost the handle going up. Tennessee, it's eighth turnover. Hey, you got that. Tariq London got in there and slapped it away from Yarbrough. Alabama's a little bit high post look now. All of Tennessee's points lately have come from the free throw line. They're 0 for their last five to the floor. And Alabama an opportunity to tie up this trip again. And that does. I'll tell you what, you can hope this are just long enough, and he's going to bust loose. This guy is too good offensively to have a bad game, leading the SEC in scoring. Yabro's going to go up from outside the arc. Victor, Victor. Nice job, tips it to himself. And now it's Higgins for three. And he banks it. And even he's laughing about it. <laughs> Rizard a jump stop. Has one rim out. Tony Harris with a rebound. Victor. I don't know if that was going to be a shot or if he was trying to get it to Yarbrough in the paint. Either way, it was knocked away and turned over. I don't think there's anybody there to receive the pass. It looked like it was going to be a shot. Maybe not. Good ball moved by Alabama. Well, they run good half court sets. Rizard open around a pick. I think it might be an illegal screen. I think that's going to be the call. Or is it going to be holding? Yeah, they're going to call it on Yarbrough. But the basket's waved off. That's a tough break. Rizard had a nice prop up on that. Well, Brent Wright's out. He's, yeah. going, he's going to be up for about three weeks. So those two guys, two of their starters, out of Billy Donovan's uh, rotation. Yarbrough midair, nice shot. That's what makes him one of the best players, I think, in the SEC. His ability to go and stop on a dime and get that shot off. So tough to guard. Dudley cross courts it, wide open. Mark. Rizard had a hand on it. Yarbrough comes free with it. Harris, nice feed inside of Yarbrough. And the rebound comes off to Rizard. Offensive foul on Rizard as Yabro hit the deck hard. And that's three on Grizzard, so that's a double whammy. He knows it immediately. He heads to the Alabama bench. There was no argument. Once the call was made, he turned and went straight to the bench. I think you could probably hear that one through my headset. The bang. <laughs> right in front of us. I'm glad they went the other direction. Me too. <laughs> We'd have had things all over the place over here if that would have been coming our way. But uh, tough job by Tennessee. And they're doing everything right right now, Larry. They're playing pretty well offensively, defensively. Alabama's not an easy team to hold down, and they're doing a good job of that, too. Well, the thing I think offensively that makes Tennessee so good right now is that they're moving the basketball. Right. They're moving inside, outside. Everybody's getting a touch of the basketball. When you've got a team that's as deep as they are, they move the ball as well as they do, it's hard to guard them. Plus, they've got talented players. Yeah. That's why they're number four in the country. And they come off the bench with some of those key players. Men at work, that's their theme here when they turn the lights off for the starting lineup introductions, and that's why you see a lot of the yellow hard hats around here. And as we said, some of the Tennessee kids were even wearing those warm-ups before the game. Yarbrough has eight of the last 11 points scored by Tennessee to help them to this five-point lead. They've had a five-point lead on three different occasions, and they're looking to add to it before the break. Victor. Rebounded underneath by Yabra. Tony Harris, big three, doesn't go. And the rebound off to Alabama. And a foul on Victor, another cheap one. That'll be his second. Well, it, you know what that is? That's a foul of frustration by Victor. Pass into Slay, who's double teamed. Still got around part of it, then had it blocked on the inside. I'm not sure who got that. I think it was Alfred Moss. Was it Moss? Yeah. 
now that's a golden opportunity for Alabama to make this a one point game and maybe tie it before halftime. Smith dribbled around a couple people trying to leave it. Hagan is missed and Hathaway clears off. Yabro's got a shot at the buzzer. Almost went. Three point lead for Tennessee. Dudley the big half for Alabama to keep a minute. Seven rebounds to go with his 12 points. 38 35 here at halftime. All right up to the building hope you've enjoyed the first half of basketball uh, my name is Jim Frazier coming up in the halftime report we have USA Films traffic ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Lincoln Financial Group clear solutions in a complex world Tennessee leading Alabama at halftime as they did last year on the road and end up losing but they've got the halftime lead here at home where they're so tough to beat 38 35 our intermission score welcome back to Knoxville everybody Brad Nessler and Larry Conley it's not a it's not a piece of art it's not a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination but they're two of the most athletic teams you're going to see and they're showing a lot of that so far tonight and Brad I think what's happened is the defense kind of took over in that first half because both of these clubs have been shooting right at 47 percent they didn't shoot that well in the first right. half but the defense had a lot to do with it let's take a look at some of the first half highlights two players that's Yarborough with the only field goal he had in the first half six of six from the free throw line the big star for Alabama was Irwin Dudley with 10 points Got a lot of it on the inside, but he can still take the ball out on the baseline and shoot that little 12 foot jump shot. Dudley with an outstanding first half. He was definitely the star for a rolling time. He had 12 points and seven rebounds, and there are the numbers. Both teams doing that defensive work, and that's really been their one of their strong suits all year as Tennessee came in holding the opposition to 40 from the floor. Alabama 38, so they're right about where they normally would be. The free throw edge goes. Strongly to Tennessee and the points in the paint Alabama Stoney Harris started hot hit a couple of threes he had eight points Yarbrough at eight as well along with five rebounds and we're underway in the second half volunteers going to open up in a man to man defense Victor kicks the ball reset the 35 second shot clock 17,274 here so when I said it wasn't packed but it's hard to pack this place it holds about 23,000 we weren't kidding around that's a lot of orange that is a lot of orange. Here's Grizzard trying to start where he started in the first half. Forcing it back up there is Dudley. Man, he just muscled that thing. I'm going to tell you what, this guy is just a bull inside. He'll find some way to get it up, even with Hathaway, Yarborough, and Victor right in his lap. He's got eight rebounds, 14 points. A 6'8", 240-pounder, as Larry said, showing his muscle. That's the Tennessee lead to a single point to open the second half. Yarbrough just inside the three-point line. Oh, that could be a big plus for Tennessee because he did not have a very good first half. Here's Higgins almost coming up and does come up with a steal. And he'll take the shot on the other end and he got it. He should be rewarded for that. And all of a sudden, Tennessee with its biggest lead. After the outside jumper by Yarbrough, the steal of the three-pointer on the other end by Higgins. Dudley again. Getting a little sloppy right now as Alabama. There's their second turnover back-to-back. -back. Harris behind the back to Victor. Offensive and foul. Offensive foul will be his third. Victor really struggling to maintain that same game playing ability that he had coming off of that Auburn tussle. He's not playing nearly as well as he did down in Auburn, Alabama. Harris with a little hot dog move there, but a good place to make that pass. Timeout taken by Alabama. So Mark Godfrey had seen enough uh, in the first minute and 10 seconds or so of the second half. The short timeout, and it'll give us a chance. Of all aficionados, who's got the best conference in the country? I think to this point, I'd have to lean toward the Atlantic Coast Conference. I think those top five clubs they've got over there should be ranked in the top 15. But I will tell you the teams one through 10, this league is as good as anybody. Yep, this one will get after you both on the road and the home games. And stepping on the sideline, the baseline rather, is Alabama. This is what Larry's talking about, the SEC in the top 25. These two clubs obviously are involved. Tennessee 
Florida, Alabama, and Ole Miss. And Alabama faces those other three teams all on the road. I'll have, a, schedule. I'll have a chance to see Ole Miss on Saturday, see what Rod Barnes is doing down there to get this club in the top 25. It's been a long time since they've been in that position. And we mentioned earlier, Billy Donovan's going to have to coach like crazy with the injuries he's got now. As Higgins has hit two threes in this half. Three for the game for John. The lead swells to nine. They're looking to Dudley or Grizzard to get them back in this game. Eight straight for the Vols. Alabama's got to have an answer this trip, or they're going to be in some deep trouble here in the first two minutes of the half. Grizzard got it. What a tough shot. How about left-handed, going to your right, turning and facing and still getting the shot off in heavy defensive pressure? Two or three guys for Alabama have taken those kind of shots, flying across the lane, going the wrong way with the body and still being able to drop them down. Here's Victor isolated in the low block. I don't think he thought he was going to have that much room to operate when he turned to the inside and now whistle and a foul. Pretty good rebound that time by Kenny Walker down inside. Yarborough got him on both arms. And that's two on Vincent. Don't count this Alabama team out. They're too athletic and too good. Guy kind of come to the forefront as a shooter here. Cologne really struggling against Harris. Look at that defense. Cologne's improved in every area. Ball handling, leadership, defense. Here's me. There's what they need is an outside shot to start to drop for him. And me with his first two point field goal. Five points for the game. And Higgins fouled before he got the pass to Victor. That foul, I think it's on Grizzard. It's four. And he's heading to the bench. That is not going to help the tied cause. That really puts a real burden on the rest of the guys on the floor out there. When you've got the Southeastern Conference leading scorer going to the bench, everybody else has got to pick up their offensive game now. Navro got by Wallace, got in too deep. Half the way, and it blocks. Yabro gets a second try. He drew a foul. Nice. Almost on a season average. You got it. You got it, Larry. I didn't get it. <laughs> you set me up. <laughs> Ball out of bonds, though, to Alabama. Or rather, uh, Tennessee. With 16.58 left in the ball game, and they're up six. Harris, Yarbrough, Victor, there's the back. Oh, he almost he got almost that. almost got that thing. And Meade pushed him underneath. Brad, he was underneath the basket when he caught that ball. He reached out in front of the backboard, in front of the glass there, and was able to get both hands on the ball. Watch this play. Watch Yarbrough. He is so far underneath the basket and comes back in after being pushed. Oh, man. What a play. John Clockerty with a call on the push. That is some athletic move. What some of the lobs by Tony Harris. He's had about four of those tonight. Bob King. 47-41. Tennessee, 16-54 left. And Tennessee came out from the break and really kind of took control of the ball game. Alabama's going to have to start hanging in there. Now they got some foul trouble. Too. I think Mark Godfrey had problems with his club. They kind of left their uh, their minds in the locker room. Their bodies were out here, but they weren't ready to play that first three minutes. Tennessee took full advantage of it. I'm going to tell you, this is a Tennessee club you cannot lose your concentration with because they will come out and put an 8 to 10 point run on you before you can turn around. We told you Alabama had their work cut out for them because their schedule wasn't very tough at the beginning of the season, whereas Tennessee's was. If you look at the RPI, the strength of schedule, Tennessee is 8th. Look at Alabama's schedule. Way down the list. And so they knew that obviously Mark Godfrey wanted to give his team some early victories and build some confidence. Yabro uncontested almost with a slam. Contested only enough that he was fouled. Count the goal. He'll have a chance for a three-point play. Brad, you know, oftentimes when you make up a schedule like that, you don't know what kind of club you're going to have. He had a lot of sophomores coming back. I'm talking about Mark Godfrey. Strength of schedule was very poor. He played some very, very weak teams. But there were some clubs on that schedule that Mark Godfrey thought would really test his club that hasn't borne out well. Uh, they had a Louisville club that's not played nearly as well as people thought that's they true. were going to play this year. Tennessee team really has scheduled well, though. 
That foul, by the way, was on Need, and that's his fourth. So now two of Alabama starters have four fouls. Volunteers have gone to his own defense. Two on two matchup, Hathaway in the middle. Straight up with it is Wallace. His outside shot is not his strong suit necessarily. The ball goes out of bounds back to Tennessee. There on the bench, two of the starters, Grizzard, the leading scorer in the conference, and Meade, who's 13 a game. And they're both saddled with four apiece. If Alabama can keep this score to within about a six or eight point range, he'll get him back in there with about eight minutes to go. Victor almost lost. Points that leads Tennessee in scoring, and all of those points have come in the last 11 minutes, dating back to the late stages of the first half. Here he is again. Nice dish inside to Hathaway, trying to find the handle. What he found was a foul. The freshman, everybody thought, wow, this guy is going to be something else. Does he really know how to use that size? And uh, then a couple seasons of injury problems kind of slowed him down. But here he is in the senior season as a starter, defending down low, and trying to tip the rebound out to a teammate. The ball does come free to Yabro. That's John Harris. Walker put it on the floor. Little guys can find it down there. Yabro trying to break Wallace down. Lost the handle, but it comes free to the hot guy from the outside this half. Higgins, eight this half, 13 for the game for John. And he's only missed one field goal tonight. And the lead has swelled down to 11. That's the biggest of the night. Alabama's in some trouble unless they find some offense, and Hathaway rejects one. Leading shot blocker on this club just got another one. Tennessee very appreciative of this defensive effort. And a steal by Victor. Well, now, there's maturity. Harris wants to let one fly. Victor trying to tip it in and does. What a nice weapon to have when you got a guard that can't make shots. You got two big guys inside to stick them back in. Mark Godfrey, you may be thinking about a timeout here. And he does take one. And now the crowd explodes. Almost 18,000 here. They're enjoying it. The Vows lead. The Vows lead is well to 13. On the broad shoulders of Charles Hathaway, Isaiah Victor, and Vincent Yarborough. A very strong front court for the Volunteers. Hathaway's had a little bit of an offensive game, but his defensive game is always there. Terrific block down on the inside. Dudley tried to get one up over him, couldn't do it. Watch the follow-up inside. Isaiah Victor off of the front of the rim. Battles it, keeps it alive, and then puts it back in. He and Hathaway right there. That's where it started rocking here in Rocky Top Lane. They're playing it now, an 8-0 run. The second one of this half. Remember, Tennessee in the second half, especially the first five minutes of the second half, nobody touches them. I don't know what Jerry tells them at halftime, but look at this. They've outscored opponents by almost 100 points in the first five minutes of the second half this season. Whatever he's got in that locker room. It's amazing, isn't it? something else. Tennessee back in that zone defense again. They will match up out of this. Alabama has been working the perimeter. Tough to get in inside against these guys who block shots so well for the Volunteers. Here's a lob. Another errant pass. Three on one for Tennessee. Harris, a pull up. Jay. Everything going right right now for Tennessee. Well, they run that break so well. With Harris at the helm, he handles the ball as well as anybody in the country. Wallace glides, Hathaway blocks. Here come the balls again. The dish to Victor. Got it! This has been an all-out blitz by Tennessee. What a run. On both ends of the court. Alabama is in deep trouble. Watch Harris come back down, pull up, an easy jump shot from about 15 feet, knocks down the deuce. Watch Charles Hathaway on the block. Man, that is some kind of block there. Victor caps it off the three-point play. Tennessee on a roll. Doing it in a variety of ways. They lead 59-41. 
right, Jim, much like Alabama, Georgia Tech snaps a 15 game road losing streak. What a shocker that is. Virginia, the only team to hand Tennessee a loss this year, but right now, Tennessee is doing anything they want with Alabama. Big win for Paul Hewitt's club. That is yes. really big. Here's a three by Grizzard. Rebound. Yarbrough got his hand on it, got it out to Victor. That's Harris, a long. little stutter step yeah. by Tony. That's about the only thing that slowed him down. Get that one little extra step, trying to get a little bit closer to the basket. Jerry Green has been very uh, placid tonight. He has had to stand up and yell very much. It's only the tenth turnover against Tennessee. Had a few problems early, but they buckled down from the floor. Rosario try another. Almost airballed it. Suddenly, I think he's their best bet. They just can't get it in his hands. And when he does, he's getting bumped by Hathaway, but it's a chance again for Tennessee. He came into the game leading the Southeastern Conference in field goal percentage, but a lot of those obviously are in close. He doesn't wander very far from the tree. <laughs> he doesn't at all. Alvaro <laughs> off balance shot going the wrong way. Rosario will bring it up court. Sound crazy, but Tennessee's got to be very careful not to get sloppy at this point because there's still a lot of time left in this game. I believe Alabama can find some offense. Grizzard comes up short on it off the glass and Slay rebounds. There's a lob again. Almost throwing it down was Hayslip, and then Yabro missed as well. And that was sloppy. Would have been great had it gone, but athletic. Both of these guys can sky. As we say in the business, they have hops. Yes, they do. Woods comes in. More of a three-guard look now for Tennessee. Volunteers back into that zone defense. You see Harris out on the point of it. I think unless Alabama can find an outside shooter, not necessarily a three-point shooter, somebody to knock some down, they're going to have a long haul back. Now like this. He missed two though. Aceman keeps it alive. Harris the dish to slay. Reverse layup. Well, how about the move by Tony Harris? After the shot, he doesn't take a second one. Gets himself in a little hot water and still is able to make the pass. It's a difference between Tony Harris of last year and Tony Harris of this year. He would have taken another shot. That time he went inside and gave the ball up. He might have taken three a couple years ago. Alabama turns it over again. With 11.47 remaining, the lead remains 17 for Tennessee. Doing it inside with Ron Slay. Pack your hard hat and your lunch pail in this arena. Tennessee's been awfully tough here since Jerry Green showed up and in this second half they've been double tough Larry. Yeah they've had a couple of runs one 13 to nothing the other one eight to nothing and they've done it all on both ends. Good offense good defense. Tony Harris with an easy 12 foot jump shot. Tony Harris giving it up by Isaiah Victor off of the glass. This is a very good Alabama team that's facing an even better Tennessee team. 23 to 9 they've outscored them in this half and we told you Tennessee especially in the first five minutes or so of second half this year have been sensational and unless Alabama can find a score I think this one is almost in the books and they may be able to but with the foul trouble they had with Meade and Grizzard having to go out and though Grizzard is back in there Mark Godfrey knows he's got a pull the plugs now and let everybody play or he's got no shot but so far they haven't been able to find it from the outside and if they don't do that this last 11 and a half minutes you can just kind of watch Tennessee play which missed a three and Slay keeps it alive Slay always seems to be around the ball doesn't he mm -hmm. Seven rebounds tonight. Slay does. This is scoring off the bench with four each. And Wallace and Walker. Walker started. Wallace the first guy off the bench, each with three. And that's taken away some of their offensive game because they can't plow in there and hope to draw a foul because any kind of charge and they're heading to the bench. There's a nice move inside, and it's a guy that's done it for him all night. He can even pick him up off the floor and make him. <laughs> 19 for Irwin. Dudley. Tennessee with a 1-4 set right here. They'll pop somebody out on the wing. 
Yeah, you see the turn right there by Higgins. I think Higgins two three pointers in that early stretch of the second half are the ones that kind of killed Alabama. He's not a big scorer and he knocked down a couple of threes that really frustrated the tide. And here's another guy doing it now off the glass is Terrence Woods. His first basket. And Curtis Shaw emphatically calling a foul on Slay. Still on the floor and still looking at the official that made the call. Take a look at the battle on the inside. You can see Slay trying to get loose in there. Terrence Woods comes down that right side and makes an easy one. It comes right off the glass. I'm not sure who should have gotten that foul. Yeah, he had him hooked in there. Would have been a pretty good holding call in the NFL as it is. Overall, I was looking at his numbers. He was one for ten out of the rainbow classic. He must have got some sand between his toes. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what, this guy can shoot from long range. 23 of his 30 field goals this year. Is it's rare that he knocks running off the glass as he just did that last trip down. His meat outside. And still, he had trouble from the outside. And Wallace goes up, couldn't find a handle, and ended up walking with it. Midway point of the second half, and Alabama looking at its second loss and its first in SEC play, unless they find a little bit of magic here in the last 10 minutes. And this game does not, uh, it does not return to Tuscaloosa. Only one time do these two clubs play each other during the year. The nice payback for Tennessee. They're still wondering how they lost that game last year in Tuscaloosa by five when they were shorthanded. It was a big win. It was a 12 and 13 Alabama team at that time and it was Tennessee ranked seventh in the country. So nobody expected that to happen. It did. And the payback looks like it's coming here in Knoxville tonight. Meade with a good quick move down that baseline but Alabama got back on defense. Or, uh, Tennessee did. Alabama was trying to get to that baseline as quickly as they could. <laughs> Zarr will go up from outside. Still nothing from the outside. Hazel put a good block out that time on Wallace. Where's James Robinson when they need him? <laughs> Becky just came back from Europe. As a matter of fact, he signed a 10-day contract in the NBA. They could use him out here shooting threes tonight. Speaking of threes, another opportunity for one. As it's that man Slay going to the line again. Nice work, Grinch staff penetrating deep enough inside, and a nice catch by Slay to finish it off. Rod's got 14 points and six rebounds. Man, she got some long pants. You can make a 10 out of that. <laughs> <laughs> you could use the headband to wrap it up when you want to throw it back in the car trunk. 6'8", sophomore out of uh, Nashville. Doesn't cap the three-point play. Hey, so gee, if you're not going to catch it. 12 turnover against Tennessee. As we approach nine minutes remaining in the ballgame. That way kicks outside. That one was almost an air ball by Wallace. Just clipped the front end of the rim. There's a no look and knocked out of bounds by Wallace. As Slay was alone down on the baseline. Well, Walker with a nice look to the inside. And Wallace was fortunate to get there to slap it away. Harris might be leaning on an ice pack over there. He's had some problems at times. His lower back. He's sitting kind of funny in that chair anyway. And man, Jerry Green has done a terrific job. Head coach at UNC Asheville for a number of years and then came here from Oregon. After being an assistant with Roy Williams of Kansas. Here's a lob. Hazlett couldn't get to it, but was he undercut by Grizzard? That's going to be the call, and if it is, Grizzard's history. And he is gone. And the leading scorer in the SEC leaves with eight points and 8.51 left. That's too bad. That's uh, not his A game, if you will, tonight. Well, he got himself in a bad defensive position that time, Brad. He was too far underneath, and the only way he could prevent that lob pass was simply to undercut Ace look as he was going up. Not been a good night for Alabama. Nope. They hung tough even till halftime, but it was that spurt to start the second half by Tennessee that kind of took the air out of the tide's balloon. And now Hayslip will try to make it a 20 point ball game from the free throw line. I 
talked earlier about Hayslip and uh, the Tennessee staff talking about the number of minutes he's gotten so far. They're really trying to work him up there to increase his numbers up to about 18 to 20 minutes because of his athletic ability. He's got one of the strangest foul shots I've ever seen. He almost looks like he flips it up there. Doesn't shoot it, just flips it. Well, it's a 21 point lead. We didn't expect this, not especially after the uh, first half. Here's Stinnett, the local youngster in the ballgame for Alabama from Maryville, Tennessee, which is just basically an outskirt of Knoxville. And he's going to try one from the outside. Nice scramble for the loose ball. Alabama's to the balls. Pretty good effort inside, though. Kenny Walker on the floor trying to come up with it. And Godfrey with a look of frustration on his face and maybe a little disgust. His team is two of their last 18 from the floor. That'll make any coach look out and wonder. it all away. Nice hustle. Yeah, nice to see him back playing again, at least being healthy enough to come back and help this club. Good anticipation. Need was a really uh, an errant pass. And again, an errant pass by me. Two staff is there again. And that'll be clipping. <laughs> throw the flag. I gotta get you out of that season. <laughs> Falling apart right now for Alabama. Look at that, Meade just uh, a very lazy pass. Grand staff with a good anticipation going to the end. Then Meade does it a second time. This time, Grand staff's going to have a chance to make a couple of free throws. Grand staff did have one good game this year. He played against Syracuse and picked up 11 points against them. That's five, by the way, on Meade as well. So two of the starters are gone. 7.44 left Alabama without two of their top five. Grimes to have missed in second. And we got a five. So it's 70-46 with 7.44 left. Tennessee in command. Fans, as you see some of the student body there, 70-46. We talk about the super subs tonight. And Ron Slay has been. Gerald Wallace hasn't. 14 points for Slay to go with seven rebounds, and Wallace has been a non-factor. There are five Tennessee players right now in double figures, and their bench scoring, that's been their strong suit all year long. We talked about him scoring about 33 points a game for a bench, 23 to 8. They lead tonight. Alabama can't find an outside shooter. They're 0 for 10 on three-pointers this half, 1 for 16 overall. When you're trying to get back in a game, if you got a three-point shooter, you got a chance. They're going to try one here. They're rimmed out. The rebound is Hayslip. Last 10 minutes has belonged to Tennessee. 24 to 5, now 26 to 5 on a floater by Woods off the glass. Brad, we just pointed up on, the, on that particular graphic about the bench scoring uh, by Tennessee over Alabama, but that's only part of the story. I think those two runs that Tennessee put together, and they'll do this to you. I mean, they'll hit you with a couple of really quick lightning bolts, and you just got to be ready. Yeah, they're right in the middle of another one. 11 straight. They do get a blocked shot there from Walker. I'm not sure this is a half of runs for Tennessee, or if Alabama just hasn't showed up this half. That's almost as bad as it's been. Basket goes by Grindstaff. He hits the deck hard, and he's going to have a chance for a three-point play, it looks. Well, the problem, Alabama is trying to get back into this game with their three-point shooting, and that has not been one of their strengths this year. No. I mean, they rank 11th in the conference in that category, only averaging 30% coming in. Nice follow-up on the inside. Grindstaff's going to have a career tonight. Grindstaff, five points this half. Really well against Syracuse, as you mentioned earlier. And he has half a dozen tonight. And the lead is closing in on 30 now. 75 46. Martin, too strong off the glass. Hayslip, I think he knocked that thing up and in, didn't he? I think he did, but I think he's going to give a credit to Doc Martin. I think he was the closest player. Wait 
for an official word on that. We'll take Larry's word for it. Right I am now. not I the official score. <laughs> guarantee it was off Hazel. They're going to give it to Dudley. Dudley. Hazel with a nice little jump hook right in the lane. Well, Hazel's done something that most guys don't get a chance to do during the course of the season. That score on both ends back to back. <laughs> <laughs> Dudley again. And Dudley's had a nice game. Here's a steal. A little bit sloppy right now. The last six minutes. London got mugged by. Tonight for both of these clubs with this spread the way it is right now. Such a big win for Tennessee for them to uh, escape with a win down at Auburn on Saturday. We're going to go to the double overtime to get away from Cliff Ellis's club down there and come in here and really have a uh, rocking chair game, if you will. After the first half, they really have taken control of this game in the second half. Yeah, they've been able to sit back and smile. Everything but the corn cob pipes. This is easy now. I think Reese Davis is an Alabama guy. He's probably in mourning right now, having to do Sports Center after this debacle. By the way, have you ever seen Dan Patrick's game? It's pretty good. Yeah, I know it is. There's a rebound by Stinnett. Local product. Uh, finally got one to go. Three quarter by Meade. Only the second one of the night, and he's hit both of them. Too little, too late. The Alabama club has got geared up. Got to get geared up to play in that Western Division over there. I'll tell you what, Brad, at this point, I couldn't tell you who's going to win that Western Division. Of the SEC. Pretty open, isn't it? Yeah. Slay too deep. And Meade comes out of there with it. You know, with the way Ole Miss is playing right now, having beaten Oklahoma and Southern California and beaten uh, Vanderbilt in Nashville, I don't know what they've got over there. Mississippi State went out to Tucson, beat Arizona out there. I mean, they obviously had some problems right. out there, but tough to still beat Arizona out there on their home court. we got about a month and a half to straighten it out. Well, you and I, for the most part, we'll try to do that every Tuesday night. On just for Tuesday. Just about every Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. It was in three sweet 16s with Alabama on the bench now as their head coach. Not liking what he's seen tonight is Coach Godfrey, obviously. Stid it outside, got it. Mark Godfrey played one of, the, one of the best Alabama teams I've ever seen. I mean, they had a terrific club. A fellow the name of Jim Farmer, Terry Connor, Derek McKee. Outstanding club. Graduate of Alabama in 87. State Alabama's got a little run going. Ten straight. They needed to start this as a marathon more than a sprint about uh, ten minutes ago. Tennessee on top. Kentucky took them a while to get over that 500 mark. Had to do it with a close win over Louisville. South Carolina, we mentioned their big win over Florida. Over the weekend, dropping Florida to 0-1. All well, the question marks about Florida right now with those injuries, they've got to keep players. Yeah. Georgia, not that bad a club at 7-7. and They played a tough schedule. Oh, did they ever. Meade rattles out the free throw. And look who's coming back. Starters. Not that they weren't expected to maybe see a little more action, but they come in as a unit right here at 401 as if to say okay this is uh, this is close enough it got almost to 30 points and now it's 77 58 so a little bit more in doubt the 10 0 run has cut the lead down 10 and uh, Jerry says let's send everybody back out there he missed them both can't do that expect to back to the Club when you've got garbage time. You've got less than four minutes to play. You've got a 19-point lead. See which club has the best discipline. Right now, Tennessee in their half-court game. Doing a pretty good job. Yarbrough took a bad shot. <laughs> That's one of those where you go, no, no, yes, yes. And he knows what he's laughing about. He's got 16. So the starting five on the floor for Tennessee, and immediately they get a three-point play to push the lead back to 22. Also got to remember last year they had such a difficult time with all the injuries and the wow. players they had. There's a three. Meade is the only guy that can shoot threes apparently for Alabama and he hits one there. To keep it under 20 again at the three minute mark upcoming.
Easy. Victor all alone on the baseline. Misses a little half hook though. Tony Harris comes out of there with it. Half the way in Yarbrough play catch. Yarbrough plays catch with the bottom of the net. They call it the old give and go. Give it and get to the basket. Yarbrough got it right back from Hathaway. Give and get out of the way. <laughs> Stead it for three. And Victor pulls it off the backside. Tony Harris ran right into London. Turns it over. With a half to go. Tennessee with their starters back in there. They got it geared up in a hurry, didn't they? They lead 82-61. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by brand name tires, oil changes, and more at your neighborhood Walmart Tire and Lube Express. Tennessee, a big lead of 21, with two and a half remaining. Jerry Green's club on its way to a 15 and one start. And one of the best all time starts ever. Here's a block shot by Yarbrough. Well, you don't see blocks that far out very often, but it didn't bother me. He launched it again. Sports Center just a couple minutes away. Need a try outside again, and he's got another 3-3 three, three here in the last couple of minutes. Once you fail, try, 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 try again. That's right. He's got 14 points. And a push on Wallace. I think that's going to be four on Wallace. Nice balance tonight for Tennessee. Tony Harris has 10 points, seven assists. Higgins has 13 points. Yarbrough has 18 points and eight rebounds. Victor, 10 points. Slay 14 off the bench. It's been one of those kind of nights. Everybody's in the act. Victor Quiet, considering what he did over the weekend, is the SEC Player of the Week. And he does have eight rebounds to go with his 11 points. You know, Brad, I was looking at uh, our ESPN poll, our top 25 the other day, and Stanford obviously on top, Duke second, Michigan State third, but Tennessee fourth. I want to tell you what, if you wanted to see those four clubs right now, you couldn't go very much wrong with either one of those right. four. And there's the group that Larry's talking about. Stanford's the only group, the only part of that group that I have not seen in person. And uh, Collins good twins. balance. Collins twins are outstanding, and they've got a terrific shooter and scorer in Casey Jacobson. Well, those guys a couple times last year, but haven't seen them in person yet this year. Here's Dudley. Turns around and squares and fires. Had a little bit of help down underneath this. Meade has been the offense in the second half for Alabama, but there hasn't been enough for Terrence to go around. This volunteer club is going to be very tough to handle this year, particularly here at home. Yep, they're tough here. Inside a follow -up. On a miss. And a the horn, the horn, just, horn just sounded. I'm not sure I understand why. There wasn't a shot clock violation. Andy, a freshman out of Houston. Had a broken uh, bone in his hand in the preseason, which kind of hampered him. Another wide body. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, you could put his and Slay's pants together, and we could have two tents. <laughs> we, could, we could put a circus we out there. We could go camping. That's yeah. right. <laughs> circus LA here at uh, Knoxville. Wallace high for the rebound after the miss. Neat. And missed it off the backside that time. Did it, will try. Instead, and got it. So the little guy from right here in Tennessee, the sophomore, knocks down a couple threes. A medical redshirt a couple of years ago when Alabama visited Tennessee, so he didn't get a chance to play in front of his friends and family for around here, but he knocks down a couple of three pointers here in the second half. Sports Center is less than a minute away. And it's it with a steal. Nice 
cross court pass to Wallace on the fly. Only eight points left the ball game with almost nine minutes to play. First time he hasn't been in double figures, and Wallace likewise, a guy that misses a free throw. Shake and bake. A little too much bake or shake. I'm not sure which one it was, but as the old saying used to go, but it's fried and I helped. That's a turnover. They go back the other way. I'll tell you what, this is a southern tradition right here, Shake you and bet. Bake. Look at this. A little turn, a little maneuver, a little bad pass. That sound is the story of the second half. Here's Walker on an outlet pass for Drysdale. He wanted to go high, and he finally got a chance. Final 10 seconds. It's been a laugher for Tennessee with a sensational second half. They've just buried 14th-ranked Alabama, where they haven't lost all year. They'll go to 8-0 at Thompson Bowling Arena with a resounding win of 86-69 to is the final. Mark Godfrey's team falls thrown for the second time this year, and Jerry Green's club is 15 and 1. Sports Center's coming up next for Larry Conley and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Brad Nessler saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader. 43-37, and then with a 50-point lead, the governor, Gerald Wallace. Governor Wallace is filibustered by Charles Hathaway, Tony Harris, to Isaiah Victor. Bottom. Victor had 34 against Auburn on Saturday. Balanced effort for Jerry Green in this one. 86 to 69. Tennessee rolls. They won 15 in a row at home. 10th straight home win against ranked opponents. Alabama's young team's been criticized for a soft schedule, and both of its losses have come against ranked opponents, Tennessee and Cincinnati. Oklahoma beats Texas A&M 78 to 65. Here's Jerry Green has been building the.